This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wait for the perfect time and attack. Don't give a what you want, take it back. Wait for the perfect time and attack. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show formerly known as the Wrestling Mayhem Show Experience. It is the Wrestling Mayhem Show episode 663 Tuesdays we've been talking about professionalized wrestling. Uh, Mike Sorg at Sorgatron, the Twitter here in Sorgatron Media in Pittsburgh, PA. And with us, joining as normal, uh, from Beacon, New York. He is the only mayhemer with a future endeavor letter from the WWE. He is mad. Mike. Sorg. Mm -hmm. I will now be known as Lead Firefly. Lead Firefly. Of the Firefly Funhouse. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> oh boy. There we go. It, it, this is this is gonna be a blast. Um, it's one of those <laughs> nights. And we have not one, but two special guests with us tonight. First of Ooh. all. Uh, <laughs> hey friends, we have some neighbors with us today. Uh, <laughs> first of all, you know him as the voice of uh the international wrestling cartel. And I I need to fix your camera. And also wrestle Rex more recently too. Yes, you yes. wrestle Rexed. I wrestle. I I Rexed the hell out of that you. Rexed wrestle. out of the wrestle, and and wrestled out of the Rex, and maybe had a taco. I don't know that I had a taco that evening. Uh, the same tacos. The same tacos is across the street. So hurry your ass over there. <laughs> <laughs> if I had cash, I already would. Be. Ah, uh, but the Farnsworth is with us once again. The Farnsworth. Jay Worthington sure. Farnsworth. The Farnsworth. The Farnsworth. Like Farns. Farns. Farns Wizzy. Worthy. Wor worth is he? <laughs> I briefly was a rapper known as Blaze You Dead Homie. <laughs> Go ahead and prove that I wasn't. I can't prove that you weren't because he wears face paint. Exactly. <laughs> I can't do that. Let me know. Let me know. Let me know how that how that is. One last G. <laughs> Jeez. Um, also with us, a wait. You've been you've been on this. One? I've been on this one before. You've been on yeah. this one ages ago in it, a basement. In a basement, far four blocks away. Yeah. Chance is back with us. I am. Chance, what do you do? I mean, we talked about animation on gold, I guess. But <laughs> I self high five. You self high five. Um. I am a former pro wrestler. I am a storyboarder. I'm all around funny, I guess. <laughs> um, I'm on Twitter. I play video games. Yeah. I mean, I pretty much do anything that requires me to have a pen. Except yes. for, te well, I do taxes. Um, but, yeah. So. And you brought a PowerPoint for I did for us. I brought bullet points. You brought bullet points for <laughs> this discussion tonight. So we will get to those there in the second segment. But of course, this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. You can check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com where you can find links to subscribe to us in podcast and video form or look us up on your favorite platform. And also you'll see the other shows like the Indie Mayhem Show uh, where we just had a uh, great conversation uh, this week with Ray Lynn, who just got back from Japan. Oh, really? And nice. uh, this week we'll be talking with Hollywood Couture, uh, Katie Arquette, Calvin Couture, and uh, Elijah Dean. A lot of great stuff happening with that crew. And uh, you can also check us out. Uh, we are available on your Google Home and Amazon Echo on Google Home. Please go ask for the Wrestling Mayhem Show on Google Play Podcast. And on your Echo, please ask the A word, A -word girl uh to play the wrestling mayhem show on tune in and it'll pop up there and thank you so many i think it was alex was sending us a video of it working <laughs> on his uh, uh on his uh echo uh a little bit ago i think it was on his cube actually if i'm not mistaken so um so thank you for proving that it actually works and not just here in the studio um you can drop us a line at that email address 
Good times. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or 412-206-WMS0. Tweet us at Mayhem Show. And, of course, follow the Wrestling Mayhem Show page and group. And check us out here live every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time on Facebook Live on the Wrestling Mayhem Show page. And uh, please also follow us. Um, please also follow us. Uh, Friendster. Friendster. Yeah, we might be on Friendster. I, there's still a MySpace page, but I think they deleted all of our photos, which sucks because that's the on ones. LinkedIn. That was all our good pictures with like Corey Graves before he was Corey Graves and the Ray Rowe before he was hmm. Eric. <laughs> Hashtag not my Eric. Hashtag not my Eric. Listen. He, he's hashtag, doing all right for himself. Hashtag still my row. No, we're not. Hold on, I can't get okay, to it in the okay, intro. We okay. can get to it later. We we will. We, Fair enough. We we will get to it later. But happy for you, Eric. Um, <laughs> he didn't, we he didn't understand that. You didn't say it in Viking. No, I didn't say it in Viking. It's a uh, it's a great Week Twelve matchup in the NFL. Viking Raiders. Yes, yeah, that's exact. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's let's finish anyways, the intro. Let's go. Anyways, the intro. Thank you to everybody supporting the show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show, including at the fan of the show one dollar level. Bo Diggity! Woo! Woo! Ed Burke, Bobby F. J. Town, Tina Keys, and the Matthew and Jennifer Carlos Foundation for Podcast Veteran. Thank you to our friends at the Pocky Club $5 level. Hope you guys have been enjoying the After Dark that we've been putting up there lately. Um, at least I have. I hope Producer Missy posted that last week. I did not check yet. Uh, if not, you'll be getting some extra, extra double special this week. Um, uh, our friends over there, Bradley Brothers, Doc Remedy, Dave Podner, Kyle Turner, and Daniel Towery. Um, also, at the Manager $20 level... Mad Mike is still on there. Oh, he's, he's doing a post. For the next um, seven days. So seven days. You're on manager level. That's yeah. why we are talking about whatever he wants to. And also our friends at Occupy Pro Wrestling supporting us at the manager level. You can support the show if you get value out of us. If you want to be a part of it, want to get a little bit more out of the community, hit us up at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. And there's anything you'd like us to see at those levels. Um, you know, please any suggestions, anything that you think it will be even more worthwhile at those levels or get something special out of the show. We're trying to experiment with some things. Um, I did a podcast. I did actually just render it. Um, we did a, an extra special podcast, uh, myself and cameraman Rob, uh, we were testing the equipment for commentary. We're using some new stuff at RWA this past weekend. So we did about a 12 minute podcast with, a uh, with a guest star, uh, Bert Legrand because why not? So we should just do a podcast on Endgame next week. That we could, <laughs> we could do that. Um, we could do that, uh, 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 baby. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> what, what what was the thing we were just talking about that I said we can't talk about yet? Eric, 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 and I, Ivar, um, Ivar, Ivar. No, no, no. And I want to make this clear. I am so happy for Warbeard. Oh yeah, and Ray absolutely. Rowe. I am Rowe, so yeah. happy for him. I they seem to be on the right track in the ring, and I, and it's unfortunate that the name that, that the conversations around their names and everything. I mean, it's just a perplexing move. Um, I'm hoping the general audience doesn't care, uh, to be honest. And it's just us weird. I hope they still chant war despite what we call them. Yeah, what are you gonna like? Yeah. What are you gonna fist bump to, right? Like, like experience, experience, experience. Yeah. experience. Well, I they're mean, not, they're, they're not, not experienced. Raiders, Raiders. Yes. I mean, here's the thing: they introduced a very Bash Brothers esque gimmick, like right at the tail end of the Bash Brothers. So right. it just doesn't. I mean, why don't you just do that? Instead of having everything faced around like Vikings, just you know. Well, for them, they they've been, well, okay, they've basically been Vikings. Yeah, I know. Since they were War Machine. Yeah. But I, did we have to say it? Right. Yeah. Like I mean, we're being really literal. Well, to be, I mean, to be, someone had to spell it out to Vince. Yeah. What did you put classes on? What time of day is it there? Because my future's so bright, sort of. Okay, Farnsworth, you were about to say. I'm sorry. So, <laughs> same joke. He, he just stepped on it. That's okay. It. Yeah. Um. Do we know if Vince knows what a Viking is? <laughs> he, he thinks it's those guys. Apparently, no, he he absolutely does because he made the Berserker. Well, here's the thing. Huss, huss. Hus. I mean, is Berserker still alive? Is he? John Nord. John Nord. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. Although I seem to recall some sort of. Seeing something about an injury or illness, mm. recently get thrown so, out of the ring. So he won't. We won't. Did he get... try to stab the Undertaker again? <laughs> well, 
I'm sorry, Chance. You were saying before I interrupted. I'm sorry. No, I, I was just trying to make a joke about how he doesn't really know what's going on in pop culture. And he doesn't. So no, it's, no. I mean, he, it's less He didn't know what was going on in pop culture in the 80s. Yeah. He did. But that's when, you know, drugs were around. Anyway. Yeah. Not to change the subject yeah. terribly, but is everyone aware of the whole Paul Birchall story? Hmm. Oh, about the. Uh, please enlighten those that are not yeah. aware of this. Right, so this is a good story. So Paul Birchall was going to be a was a pirate character, and he was for and, like a, at least a month. Yeah, I, I want to say he got as, no, as he far was as pirate Paul Birchall for a while, mm-hmm. and yeah. uh, it was around the time of Pirates of the Caribbean. And so the WWE was trying to ride the coattails of that, have a pirate character. Mm -hmm. And after about a month, Vince saw it and said, what the hell is that? And they explained, he's like, and he had never heard of the movie and didn't understand why anyone would bother to see a pirate movie and told them he hated the gimmick and just kill it. Meanwhile, the pirate movie was like the biggest movie at the time. It was, and frankly, it brought back pirate movies. There hadn't been a successful pirate movie since I want to say like the forties. Yeah. So yeah. So because Vince's is, Vince's finger on the pulse of America mm-hmm. is is off a bit. Oh so. yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. So it, it's it's strange. It kind of goes out there with the why is everybody one name now? Um. Yeah. Kind of thing, so, and I, you know, it's not. But he, they, I mean, they've always done that too. Cause it, it's a marketing thing. Yeah, it makes it. E- it's easier to sell a shirt that says Triple H than one that says Hunter Hearst Helmsley. Right. But like the thing with Ali, like Ali could have stayed the way he was. It's just bizarre to just change him to Ali. I I worry that that's a we're worried about the name Mustafa, or are we yep. are we yeah, worried about why but, they coming um, out? They are going to be going to Fox. Mm. Oh! Uh-huh. No, 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 no. They're going to Fox the Channel. Fox Mar- the Channel. Fox. The Fox the Channel is not Disney. It is no, separate. No, I'm, I'm, I'm saying Fox in general probably does not like the name Mustafa. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. No, that's it's definitely, but that's what he's had to deal with his well, entire career. Right, right. And, and and there was just a video about him talking about how he's fighting those stereotypes yeah. and how he's been a possible of influence so on his like, community. Just like cutting that down, yeah. makes, it kind of eliminates that entire thing. It's very confusing. I like I literally like was thinking like, wow, that's confusing for wrestlers we know like London Ali. Yeah, right? exactly. And, like, and I'm going to talk about it later because it's on my PowerPoint. Okay. But uh, Jenny Couture is having sort of the same thing. And if mm-hmm. they bring her over, it's going to be much of the same. It's going to be a bizarre thing. Who's that? Jenny Couture. Um, she is now. She's no- in UK, right? Yeah, NXT UK. Okay. Uh, yeah. She's one of the ladies. She's now known only as Ginny. She's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. For, a t- yeah. for like what she, like how she's built. Mm-hmm. And I hate saying that, but like she's very good and very thin, and very flexible, and like she can go. Oh yeah, it's yeah, just, she's great, and she has her own thing all brought up. But like taking the couture out of that is just bizarre. Like mm-hmm. why would they well, would do that? But I I think that's oh. more of a licensing issue because of Juicy Couture. Yeah, uh, is this a picture of her that I'm pulling up here? Um, I, I think I got the right girl over on the left there and i mean she I still does the gimmick like they just oh, call her a fashionista now yeah yeah she well yeah, yeah. now then there was the there were vignettes yeah, when i was like when i was yeah they just call her a fashionista now so i mean you know it's still the same gimmick it's just avoiding any potential licensing issues yeah and plus uh from what's happening on nxc uk in the future oh it's gonna be fun yeah it's 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 a she lot she has of... a new buddy oh, oh yeah and oh and it it's it's it, 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 <laughs> It's real good. I gotta say, so I dare say, it's pretty jazzy. Mike, yeah. I was talking a little bit before about how um, I, I was really kind of falling behind and, and fell out of two hundred five live. Um, just really was not able to get caught up and feel like I I want to watch all of NXT UK, right? Yeah. But I'm seeing enough out of two hundred five live that I like. There's enough different faces that I'm like, oh man, I need to jump back into this. 
and that seems to be the case. Are are you from what you're seeing on your end uh, through your means? Um, are you, are you, does that seem to be the case too? I mean, obviously, UK you think is uh, is doing really well. Um, in terms of two hundred five, are you? Okay? And, and in terms of two hundred five. Uh, 205 is kind of cool now because they've really kind of streamlined the show where there's only two matches per episode. Okay, so they give them a lot of time. Yeah, yeah, the matches usually get about 15, 20 minutes. Okay. So you usually get a decent amount of time. Uh, Buddy Murphy has been killing it on 205. Mm-hmm. Cedric has been killing it on 205. Every time uh, Murphy pops up and has a, a defense on a pay-per-view, at least I was catching those. And mm-hmm. yeah, they're just amazing every time. Yeah. yeah. Um. Now, now, unfortunately, they're both moved to the main shows where they'll be promptly ruined by mid-May. Um, yeah, we were talking about how Cedric just seems <laughs> to have uh, slaughtered right into the Apollo role right off the hey, bat. Hey, but you know what? Yeah. He, he was up against Cesaro, and Cesaro needed a win, too. That was still... I'm okay. No, no, okay. And, and I'm still, okay. no. Like, it was one of those, holy crap, dream match I didn't know I wanted. Um. But that's still... Mm-hmm. It, it, I worry that's where we'll end up with. It. I, I'm I'm just excited that Cedric Alexander and Ricochet are on the same show. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm just excited for that. And by law of averages, eventually they'll have to face each other. <laughs> just, just there's only in the, just there's, by pure math. There's yeah. only there's only so many spots on that dartboard, right? Exactly. Here's a question: Now that Road Dog is out of uh, creative, does that mean the uh, "quote unquote" uh, SmackDown dartboard ha- that we su- supposed was a thing and I think was partially confirmed by him on Twitter uh, it, is that now gone? It's been um, replaced with ladder ball. With what? Ladder La- ball. Ladder ball. Is yeah. that the thing with the pipes and, and the balls on the string and they wrap yeah, around? Yeah, you got it. There you oh, go. Okay. You got it. I think yeah, I've been to a tailgate before. Yeah, you got it. Okay. Uh, Good job, Stork. That's how they decide the feuds. Oh, yeah. okay. whenever the balls clack together, like, oh look, it's it's Bailey and Charlotte this week. Yeah. <laughs> okay, sure. Uh, anyways, double check it with the chat room. Uh, Tina saying counterpart uh, the how they brought uh, Andrade back to SmackDown because they want more Latino stars. On, that's on not the, the reason. Lunch. I don't think that's the reason. That's either. not the reason. I think that's just what they're they engaged. That's yeah. not the reason. Charlotte's a flare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's the reason. <laughs> yep. And uh, let's yeah. see. Um, Whatever uh, Charlotte wants. We have a call out from Alex Cars. Um, as someone who's at the manager patron level, um, he'd like to spend about 30 to 45 seconds to mention Mortal Kombat 11 uh, feature Ron and Rousey as Sonya Blade. It's been pretty fun so far. Uh yes, and I and I would buy that game, except I don't want to support Ronda Rousey as Sonya Blade. Yeah, I I kind of have the same thing where like instantly as it as it was announced, I'm like, this isn't great. They nope. should probably not do this. Nope. Like it, it, and I said this before, and I will say it again, and I will say it till my dying day. If you're going to pick one wrestler to be one character in Mortal Kombat and you don't have the Miz be Johnny Cage? Exactly. What the fuck is wrong with you? Besides the fact that, like, I just have... Uh, I, I mean, I think Mike and everybody else has the same thing about it. But, like, um, yeah, Ronda's political views are terrible. Oh, yeah. I just got off. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure Becky is actually like. Um, no, Becky's fantastic for doing oh what no, she's Becky, done. Becky's great, but they're just putting her against the worst people. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. but like, that's the a, dirt that, worst people. And here's the thing: she's so hot. Like right now, you can put her against anybody. Like you can put her against AJ Styles. Yeah, or and she'll be like, "The Earth isn't flat, AJ." Yeah. And then just like keep on going, and then like all he has is you don't want none. You can just, uh. but yeah, I, I'm trying to think. You could put her against uh, who's the red girl? I forgot her name. Eva Marie. Eva Marie. You can put her against <laughs> Eva Marie, and she would make Eva Marie, Eva Marie shine. Like oh yeah, like not even not even well, like post Brian Kendrick Eva Marie. Eva had like, a great match with Bailey. <laughs> Eva had a great match with Bailey on NXT. Really? Yeah, like she's yeah, 
Like, oh, when she came back, it was everybody hated her, and she just kind of ate, it, ate mm-hmm. it up. And she was sitting yeah, on the yeah. platform in her entrance. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, Bailey and Eva had a great little match there. Dude, mm-hmm. Kendrick did a ton of good work with her, and she took to a lot of it. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm very surprised that they didn't. They just didn't have anything for her. Mm-hmm. But that's Eva Marie. That's, I mean, that's all it is. It's, mm-hmm. it's weird. I still I want I want a Becky and Nikki Cross feud. I I just want that. I just want that in my eye holes. It'll eventually happen. Plus if they bring Viper over, it'll just be a three way. Yeah. <laughs> I can't oh, see it boy. happening just because I can't see Vince being okay with two people having accents at the same time. Oh yeah. <laughs> There's two <laughs> they have accents on this show. It t- it takes it takes a lot for yeah. Like if you're not if you're not like doing the John Wayne thing twenty four seven, I'm trying to think who who actually just had to drop their accent. Somebody had to drop their accent. Really, Lana, Lana yeah. and Lana? yeah, and well, no, Lana does it by accident. No, they told her to drop it. Yeah. <laughs> um. Well, I think that's because she kept dropping it by accident. Yeah. And like she's on her she's on her Instagram and all that stuff, and until Divas with no accent, unless she says Rusev. Yeah, and I think that's just habit at this point. Vince didn't think that Cesaro would get over because of his accent. Oh boy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, like. Uh, he's, okay. he's, uh, he's literally James Bond. That kind like, of we're all in, we're all in agreement of this, right? Yeah. They did the James Bond. Like they just know, straight but, did it. But, but it was I'm good. Pretty sure, like on his days off when he's not playing <laughs> video games. <laughs> He's, he's actually an MI6 operative. He's drinking he's drinking coffee and, and taking out the bad guys. And taking yeah. out the beach balls. It's very right. European. I mean, he was very, very adept at the, that beach ball uh, task, wasn't he? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, anyways, uh, speaking of guys like that, if you are sad, hey, you know, I guess we got some great stuff happening in NXT and everything. But if you want to see the next generation... And maybe mixing with the old generation, maybe you need to go check out IndieWrestling.us. Uh, a lot of great stuff over there, including the most recent Night of the Superstars 8, which features, do you remember MVP? Um, hey, man, he is actually doing really well. And he teamed up with uh, friends of the show here, the always always dapper duo of the main event. And they took on Hollywood Couture, uh, who will be joining us here tomorrow. Um, but maybe we'll ask him about how this match went. Uh, but uh, here's a little clip. If you're with us on video of MVP and Calvin getting into it, um, you, you can imagine how this is going to go. And uh, there's a lot of throwing of people, too. But a lot of great stuff. Sting was a part of this, as well as Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Um, there was a, a bit of a challenge, and uh, Hacksaw... Uh, uh, um, was trying to get Jackson Argos and R.C. Dupree to stand for the American National Anthem. And uh, you can see how that came out to all a part of Indie Wrestling Network subscription. Also, uh, new Rise Wrestling that just went up there in the past week with the Challenge of Champions match. A great, it was an intergender uh, six-way match uh, that included... Uh, actually, I, I think I realized everybody on this or friends have been on this show um, with uh, Derek Direction defending that, of course, along with uh, PB Smooth, Jinx, London Ali, and uh, so many more. You can check that out. That's the latest edition of Rise of Wrestling, also a part of that. A lot more coming, too. Fight Society is going to be on the VOD on IndieWrestling.us. Just finished that today, and uh, that'll be out there and the Pro Wrestling Network, as well as uh, in the works, in the can, uh, RWA from this past weekend, as well as uh, Black Diamond Wrestling from this month, too. A lot of great wrestling, and holy crap, looking at the schedule for wrestling in May is incredible, and so much of it will be coming to the Indie Wrestling Network. And thank you, everybody, for supporting that, supporting Indie Wrestling, and uh, helping us keep it going so we can help uh, help you guys discover uh, new wrestlers, new wrestling uh, from Pittsburgh, West Virginia, Erie, uh, PA, Meadville, of course, with Night of the Superstars and everywhere in between. And our partners, of course, up in Cleveland with Premier uh, uh, Wrestling and uh, Welterweight Wrestling. So go check it out, IndieWrestling.us, IndieWrestling.network. All right, this is the portion where somebody brought a slideshow presentation. Listen, I, 
If you know me, I've got a lot of time on my hands. I almost did a full PowerPoint, but here... But he held it back. Yeah, held yourself back. I held back. myself back. I was yes. going to do the entire thing. There's just too much for me to draw. But, Sorg, bring that up, if you would, please. All right, so we got right here. So you, you brought this in preparation for this show. Are, are there star wipes? There are no star wipes. It's actually, it's what a, the fuck? Is it, do I have this right? Is it one slide? It is one slide. It is one slide. One okay, slide. That, okay. It's all you need when you do it right. So uh, uh, illustrate this um, verbally for our audio listeners out there, please. So this is me. Um, is, yes. And here are my bullet points for today. Um, this is all the yes column. Okay. Okay. The yeses are, are the Deaners better than the Briscoes? Okay. That's a yes. That's a yes. Okay. Uh, the Deaners just got signed to Impact Wrestling. I didn't know there were two of them until this happened. We interviewed Cody Wait, back Cody in the day. Cody Deaner and who else? Jake. Jake Deaner. My, a, uh. my good friend, Jake something from, uh, I want to say Michigan. Mm-hmm. He is uh, showing up as Jake Deaner, cousin to Cody Deaner. Okay. It is very good. And so we, we found out what something is now. It's Deaner. Yeah. Okay. And here's the thing. Um, if you ever watch their promos for Impact. I saw a little bit of it and it looks great. It's fantastic. And it's exactly like what the, uh, you know, how the Briscoes used to do the old ROH promos. Mm-hmm. Except they were serious. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, 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 well, I, sort of serious. Mark. Okay, so they're more serious now. There's one where they were talking about their contract. Like I just watched this a couple weeks ago. They were talking about their contract and, a sh- and something coming up. A tag was I think maybe leading into MSG. Yeah, and I think he was cutting up a tree or something in yeah. his backyard. They have the weird thing of like apparently they're also running a landscaping service, mm-hmm. but um, which I think they are legitimately running a landscaping. Yeah, service. they are. No, they definitely like the Briscoes definitely do have one. Yeah, and it's somewhere in northeast northeast of the united states but here's the well, thing this is not an auto body shop yeah. yeah 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 but um i used to be hard i used to be hardcore for the uh the briscoes but <laughs> listen <laughs> and we broke i used farther. to be hard for the briscoes I, I used to be really <laughs> no i used to be really big for them and it's just we are creative now, commons anybody can mix that up and now um Mark is the only thing they actually care about on the Briscoes. Has been for like maybe five years. The Sussex, the Sussex County Chicken, um, is definitely probably one of my favorite things in wrestling. However, with okay. Cody and with Cody and Jake and mm-hmm. on Impact, mm-hmm. Impact's getting a lot of good things. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's I don't think there's anybody that can disagree with that. I was t- I've been talking about Mike like again. I apologize to Mike last night for trying to get him into Ring of Honor after recent things that have been going on. Um, there and it's like, dude, impact is kind of the See, place to be. Here's, yeah. here's on, the on. thing, though. Yes, I know. It, I know. Prob- I know. Impact, impact has hurt you. Has the hurt you so bad. Problem with impact has never been the talent. No, that's true. Unless you're Austin Aries. Fuck that. Yeah, guy. Austin, Ari- Austin Aries is terrible. Yeah, like, but just like, got the awful. problem with impact has never been the talent. It's, it's always been how they utilize the talent. Which has somehow always been worse than WWE, and I never understood how that was possible. But also, if you want to just close it on my face, I'm not watching ROH anymore. <gasps> <gasps> now that uh, the best friends have left ROH, there's no reason to for some T-shirt company. Listen, <laughs> whatever. Sorry, I had to do that for Mad Mike. Whatever uh, Chuck wants to do, whatever mm-hmm. Chuck and Trent want to do with their fun. Fantastic lives. Uh huh. If they want to drunk tweet Sixers games on the on the internet, <laughs> which Chuck Teo has been known to do, I'm a oh, huge fan goodness. of that. Um, but yeah, like Impact is just it's getting very weirdly like yeah, I can see myself watching. It's because they took half of Lucha Underground. They guys. did. Yeah, yeah. And, and, <laughs> I uh, mean, if you want to get real, that's the reason. But uh-huh. they left the like, bad parts of Lucha Underground. Back in Lucha Underground, which oh, was the sexy there, star. And there is still like impact. <laughs> there, there was bad part of Lucha Underground. That was it. Impact, there, there were no bad parts. Impact does lean towards the cheesy every once in a while. Yeah. And 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 but it's acceptable because this looks like, man, these guys are trying hard. And I kind of appreciate that, even if it didn't work out. It's always been it's always been like 
ninety nine percent there. Like the yeah. Hardy stuff is was ninety nine. percent Yeah, and then they're, they're yeah, rolling. That wasn't impact. That was Matt. Well, uh, that was that was, no, well, that, that, was Matt, that and was, they allowed it to be on. That TV. was Matt, and that was Dave Lagana, who is now helping with this other stuff. Who uh, who helped kick off? No, what's he doing? Some of the well, he did the NWA stuff. I don't think he's involved with the AIW or eight. Damn it. AEW, A-E-W. too many letters. Um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, and actually, I, I know there's another guy that that works with AEW stuff. Um, but um, but like, but he spearheaded that, and now you have a lot of people. Impact style, I, I, I they roll with what started with what was inspired by the Hardys and Lagana when he was there, right? I mean, we can't deny that no. with what they're doing, as far as vignette ish weird yeah. stuff that happens right like and, they're just going into it and other creatives are taking that and here's the thing um might bring up that powerpoint again all right let's go uh, back to the powerpoint because here. this is this is extremely part of it mm-hmm. um the second bullet point would you read it off to me uh jordan grace jordan grace mm-hmm. fantastic mm-hmm. like yeah. there's really no denying that to anybody mm-hmm. uh and good that she's on a, a platform showing it off yeah, and like her Twitter's always been great. Oh yeah, uh, she and, did um, the. She's the one that did the book of the yeah with D, the, of the yeah. disgusting DMs that yeah. she mm-hmm. receives. Uh, her and Jonathan Gresham, I believe, got shoot married, and mm-hmm. that's incredible. Uh, John Gresham is also fantastic. I should have put him on there. I didn't. Oh no, let, we'll just put an asterisk. John Grisham. John Grisham. Asterix. Dude. John Grisham and Zack Sabre Jr. John and Grisham the- and John Grisham. Uh, John, yeah, John, Grisham. John Grisham, Jurassic Park. Uh, wait, no, that's a different. Is that right? No, no that's I mean, like, that's <laughs> like right. I'm Michael in right spot. Brighton. Okay. Uh, uh, question mark, question mark, question every mark. Every time profit. Jonathan Grisham was doing a show with IWC and we were live switching, yeah. I knew it was like, guys, keep it in the ring. I'm just going to switch back here because I know, I, like, because like, I want to watch the match. It was always so some of the best stuff. And, and Farnsworth, you've called up you know, plenty of his matches with him and Argos and everybody else over the last couple of years. He's he's, fan- I mean, he's fantastic. Yeah, he's he's an amazing competitor. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, like, and that's not and that's not trying to detract anything from Jordan because Jordan, Jordan has become her own thing. Mm-hmm. And like she's getting matches in Japan, she's been getting matches everywhere. She's she's hitting her stride right now. Yeah, like her stuff. I'm gonna. I'm really, really <laughs> looking forward to her and Taya Valkyrie. Oh, geez, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be just knocking people around like nobody's business. It's gonna mm-hmm. be fantastic. Um, Tina Keys in the chat saying she went toe to toe with Brian Cage. Who does that? Taya <laughs> uh, Valkyrie does that. Uh, yeah, I think they picked the, the smallest guy to fight him when he was in pre- uh, Premier Championship Wrestling a few months ago. So, uh, yeah, yeah, that was like one of the only times I liked Brian Cage. Just like, all right, this this is good. There I mean, go. that he's allowing himself to do that. Yeah, yeah. So, but he's he's always been. I mean, he's always been pretty chill. Uh, that yeah. I can tell. Uh, there. Let's see. Uh, John- GMSI. Tina, Tina also says Jonathan Gresham is a is a treat to see live. Um, got to see him against uh, Daniel Maccabee. Uh, Maccabee. Maccabee, thank you. Uh, uh, up, up in her area, up in the uh, northwest yeah. uh, last Friday. So, and he's been like, they're all they're putting they're booking almost every weekend, mm-hmm. and almost every week, and it's terrifying. Like how many, how much you think people are getting booked, mm-hmm. and how many people are staying with it? It's just plus with John and Jordan. You'll always get a good show. Mm-hmm. Always. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, back to the bullet points. Back to the bullet points. And I, I like the next one you got on here. The next one I have on there is good personal friend of mine and the show. Um, I, I think I think Katie that you just met yeah. uh, has befriended him as well. And his wife is fantastic. Uh, we're dealing with mm-hmm. Ophidian. Mm-hmm. Ophidian and Kate Nix. Kate Nix is having a fantastic time with her singles. Ophidian is having a great time wrestling teaching kids how to wrestle uh, doing great times kate nix is doing uh, what is she up to these days because i know i knew she was doing i believe she was in the uh, burlesque stuff she that they were doing out there. she dropped the burlesque but oh, now okay. she's doing more of uh solo work band camp okay all that sort of thing this is just a giant shout out anyway <laughs> um uh, there's a great interview uh with her and uh somebody else that um alex cars did on 
I think it's Takara in 15 minutes it was, yeah. that she did, he did it on. Great interview about like the burlesque and when they were partnering with Chikara and the stuff that they were doing there and kind of the similarities and all this stuff. Um, still still worth a listen, even though I think it's a couple years old now. And I think uh, she she and uh, she does bump and grind with Ophidian. Mm-hmm. Um, they're really good. There's a really good episode with her solo darling where they're just making gear and talking. Mm-hmm. It's fantastic. Um, but yeah, Ophidian has always been one of those guys that I've always looked up to. Um, he's, he's done stuff locally. He's done stuff with Chikara. He's done stuff all over. You've been doing, um, uh, beginner training videos with him too, though. have been pretty good. Yeah. The, uh, the YouTube series he does with, uh, related to that shout out to Jonathan Gresham's trainer series. He did a couple of them with some of the really? guys here in, in, in Pittsburgh. And that's where I first learned. Like I think Al LaRusso and, and maybe even DJ Z were part of them where he's like kind of <laughs> showing <laughs> off moves. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> where he's showing off moves and stuff. It is in depth and pretty cool nice. on his youtube jonathan gresham's youtube but, but i know uh Ophidian. i know Ophidian has his youtube thing of uh ring shape mm-hmm. i think it's ring shape i'm not entirely sure but it's it's not yoga but it's just sort of like getting in ring shape and that's something that i have not been in for a while but mm-hmm. it's still good to pay attention to um yeah anybody else have any thoughts on Ophidian? uh really cool a lot of fun yes. uh hates badgers he does. Sorry, he's, he's uh, quite hypnotic. Yes, yes. Now I've seen him on plenty of shows. He's actually going to be back here in the area uh, end of May. They're doing a double shot IWC Chikara, and I know he's going to be taking. I think he's taking on Andrew Palace, if I'm not really? mistaken. That's not bad. So they're doing the IWC versus Chikara thing that night. So a lot of cool stuff going on with him. But um, no, he and he's been around for a while. Like he's one of the first guys I noticed when I started seeing. We saw him. We saw him when we went to Super Indie. Yeah. The first time, Thor. Yeah, he was there that the, the first time. He's been on several IWCs, um, seen him up in Welterweight Wrestling, um, and of course the Chicago shows and everything. So um, always, always a standout. Yeah, always a standout. Always willing to give back, and more than just a character. Yeah. More, you know, like more than just a cool Chikara character. Like he's really doing a lot. Yeah. All right. So do you want to go back to the slideshow? Uh, just an update, real quick. That was on, and he actually put the link in there. The podcast um, with where they're talking about the blue. Burlesque with a uh, Ophidian's wife um, is actually on Occupy Pro Wrestling's podcast. He does two of them. I, I can't keep them. Not that she's though. defined by her relation to Ophidian. No, 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 no. I just, no, that's, that's right, Mike. I'm sorry. I forgot her name in the moment. <laughs> and that's how I connected it. Um, also, he's saying that Ophidian did some videos through the Chikara channel and they are called Ring Shape. Yes. Ring Shape. Yeah. Yes. There we go. So. Oh, next, next the bullet point. You're, you're looking bullet for points. Me. Bullet points. Hold on. I, I was looking for videos. And uh, let's see. Bullet points. Bullet points. Uh, we already talked a little bit about Jenny Couture. We did. And uh, I'm going to stress again that NXT UK, the ladies side of stuff, fantastic. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. Uh, I've always been a big, I've always been big on uh, Jenny Couture and like Ray O'Reilly, stuff like that. Um, I think Couture did stuff with Shine. I'm not entirely sure. Mm-hmm. But... Like, all that stuff that's coming up now is fantastic. Um, let's see here. What else we got? Our hot oh. dog sandwiches. Yes. Wrong. Oh. No, that, that's wrong. incorrect. Oh, sir. Sorry. That's incorrect. Don't. That's you, incorrect. You're, you're, you're wrong. That's, 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 that's incorrect. The, that's the, that is incorrect. That's, uh, I've had enough of this. Two, sandwich requires two separate pieces of bread. Um, but you can use two separate pieces of bread around a hot dog. Let's go. Yeah, wait, try wait, wait, that. Wait, 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 it, it, the hot dog's gonna fall right out because of how you eat Listen, it. Let's 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 bring this round to wrestling. Can you accept as payment uh, a sandwich and a handshake? No. Farnsworth. Oh, it depends on the sandwich. I've, I've never had it happen. So. Okay, but Listen, hypothetically, I think, it's, I think it depends on the sandwich. I hate saying that. Like, I got a shout out. Hot dogs or tacos? <laughs> you know, I, 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 if a hot dog Alex, is a sandwich, Alex, then a taco I, is a sandwich. I, right. Right. A burrito is just a sandwich that's wrapped around. Mm-hmm. Therefore, a pop tart is a sandwich. Yes. Oh, I'm trying oh. to think which what what show was I just watching? That's like, yeah, have you ever tried heating up the hot, uh, pop tarts? They're really good. It was like a five minute segment of a dude just saying that. I'm trying, to, it was. It wasn't American Gods. What was it? <laughs> um, it was. I think it was Barry. It might have been Barry. We're Barry. just like, have you ever tried heating these up? Yeah, and like, the, and then they're just 
like a reverse cut back to like his daughter just staring at him for no good reason uh anyway okay um let's I see mean, next a, 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 pop star, a pop star is really an empanada let's, let's see let's be honest. next Wait. bullet point all right next bullet point is <laughs> roh booking enzo and cast for heat was dumb yes Ooh. yes it was dumb it was terrible because anybody booking them terrible now it turned a lot of people off to that product. It, it really did. It did. It turned me right off to it. Like, I just, I couldn't it get into it. It is the antithesis of what your product is about. It really is. And the fact that they did it for that heat, and mm-hmm. then immediately turned around. It's just and like, promise, no, we don't have them anymore. They did it on a show where New Japan delivered. And yeah. The, New Japan delivered being New Japan. Exactly. Yep. And we watched New Japan be, for being New Japan. We yeah. watched Ring of Honor. Because it's the closest thing to New Japan in America. It's not the, the, the explicit it's reason, not, but, but, no, but that, exactly. that thing that we love from New Japan sure, was the what only Ring of Honor thing, was supposed to be The only reason it was the closest thing is because it had some of the same people. Well, now yeah, that no, it doesn't... Before it, that. Before no, that. When we no, used to watch Ring of Honor. And here's the thing. like Because you knew that the people were watching, and I hate using this term, you knew they were smarts. You knew that people were watching that for... Like Zack Sabre Jr. You knew people were watching that for Minoru Suzuki. You knew people that were watching that that were going to get fucking pissed off that you were going to book Enzo and Cass to do a run-in yes. because they were fucking dumbasses. I'm sorry for cracking up over here, but Alex Cars knows a local promotion out there in the L.A. area that offers meatball sandwiches as a partial pay. Oh, God, I'm uh, trying to think who that is. Uh, I've Alex, heard of that. I've Alex, heard that before. Do they need video work the second week of May? Now, wait. <laughs> how many meatballs? It's yes. not PWG. Because- because if it's a three meatball sandwich is partial pay, that ain't bad. What can I do for your promotion now? Uh- <laughs> <laughs> Barnsworth? And are the meatballs butterfly? That's very important. <laughs> Nobody butterflies meatballs. What are you, a monster? Just then you're not a ball. To eat. Yeah, then it's yeah. a meat. Yeah, you're supposed to have a hard time doing it. Meat that formerly was in the shape of a ball. It's not supposed to be fun eating a meatball meat sandwich. Dome. <laughs> yes, it is. A meat clump. <laughs> so I'm going to take the opposite stance. Uh, no, regardless of how okay. anyone feels about Enzo and Cass as, uh, on a personal level. Okay. 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 All right. You have a bunch of people tuning in to this big show yes. that you want them to tune in again after. You don't want it to be a one and done. And you know that some of them are going to be one and done. Mm -hmm. So you do a stunt booking to try and get people to pay attention. Mm -hmm. And this Uh, is the weekend where everybody uh, is doing that. They also did it. They do a stunt booking people want to see. Yeah, let let, 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 let Farnsworth finish. They they did it at the end. They they made sure not to to interrupt all the big matches. Okay. They may, they did it at the end so that you, the idea being you're going to want to see them get their asses kicked. Mm-hmm. And to be fair, if people still believed that wrestling was real, they would definitely want to see their asses get kicked. Mm-hmm. But they don't. It was a it was a good attempt to try and get people. It just did not work the way they wanted because I don't think that they. They didn't really think it out. They didn't understand where the where the heat was coming from, for lack of a better yeah. term. And the fact that they immediately, immediately backed out, just like the next day. No, we didn't do that. They're not in here anymore. We're done. Okay. And like, can we just call Enzo and Cast the Viking Experience? I mean, it's free. That's how, that's it's how long there. they lasted. It's out there. Can it's we just, out there. Yeah. Can, can we just call them the failed experience? Um, yeah. the unteachable, but it's very good. The yes. unteachable, jeez. So right. I don't think it was a bad idea. I think it. Well, I don't think it. I don't think the overarching idea was bad. I yeah. think the people that they used to implement it, yeah, like yeah. were the yeah. problem. Yeah, if it was booking isn't else. a bad idea in and of itself. I mean, you kind of got that with the beautiful people coming back, right? Yeah. Oh, I mean, it was. Yeah. Hey, these guys are familiar yeah. to people that watch TV that we want to get. You don't want to go in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it's just like, like sorry, good. No, it's it's just Angelina and Velvet. Like they're not. It's like if WWE right after WrestleMania brought in Kelly Kelly to go f- after Becky Lynch. Yeah, mm-hmm. which to be like, fair would be counter programming. I mean, it, the 
I like I, I I feel that I should state about before I begin this tirade um, <laughs> that I don't actually want to see the beautiful people unless it's in some sort of mildly pornographic setting. However, okay, sure. what they're doing is booking. Oh, you don't book what everyone else is doing. You book the other direction. You book. Mm-hmm. You book the alternative. So now that WWE is booking serious women's wrestling, you, they are booking divas. Uh, you can throw a, a larger than life diva type thing after they, out there. After they wrap their biggest feud of the serious women's wrestling of Kelly Klein and and I'm, I, I'm sorry, I forget who she was. Facing. It was so it was so big and serious you forgot one of them. I the. I didn't know either yeah. of them, so I'm not pointing well, any I fingers. Had, that no, well, pointing I didn't know here, about the so. feud until I watched the MSG show because I hadn't been following it that closely. So, it's it's an alternative. I don't think it's going to work, mm-hmm. but I at least understand the idea of trying to present something else. I just think that the WWE, unfortunately, is already also covering the something else by just airing Total Divas. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. This is true. Um, you have another seventh point. I had Was another seventh point, um, and I think it may have been a joke about Austin Aries, but we kind of ah. covered that already. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Um, yeah. So wrestling, guys. Wrestling. How do we feel about it? I would like to bring up. Has anyone seen Happy? Mm-hmm. I have. Two. I love Happy. Why are we talking about this on the wrestling Happy's show? Good. But it is fantastic because season two features the Big Show. It no does. way! It, 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 I shouldn't say features, but definitely cameo. Cameos, yeah, and yeah. you know, speaking small part. Okay, and he's I good am, at speaking. I am a. I thought he did a fantastic job with that role, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. B. I am baffled that that show was able to make it to air. Oh I, yes, I love it. Yeah, but Jesus Christ, we dude, we I, slammed through that show uh, about a month ago, the first season on Netflix, and oh, we're like, and season this two is on cable. Oh, yeah. Season two makes season one look like it's it's goddamn G rated. I'm trying to think. That's it's the Grant Morrison comic that comic that he did with Derek Robertson, and both of those people, once you get them together, it's terrifying. Yeah, they completely did that for TV. They yeah. killed someone with a full colostomy bag. <laughs> yep. On on episode four, and everything's only going up. Yeah. <laughs> and here's the thing yeah. about it: like, yeah. Chris Maloney, fantastic shape for a guy. Like, yeah, I think yeah. he's like sixty, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Also, remember, pre uh, uh, Law and Order, he was crazy guy on Oz. So. Oh yeah, and he yeah. was also in Wet Hot American Summer. And, wow! And and there's a pull. And he's also in forty-two. Fantastic role in uh, *Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas*. Did you say he's only forty-two? No, so, I said he's also in forty-two. Oh yeah, the oh, uh, uh, the comedy. Yeah, he's he's gone around like he's a no, fan. no, not the not the the Jackie Robinson movie. Oh gosh, no. what was I thinking? Very different. Very, very different. different. Two very You're different, 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 different things. One 43. has John Belushi. Nope, nope, the same <laughs> movie. <laughs> no, nah, pretty much the same thing. Happy 42. I'm sure. Um, <laughs> but you know it, what, guys? Or, I, I want to talk about pizza. Can we talk about sorry, pizza? Sorry. I'd love to talk about, pizza. about pizza. I have um, a very, very sad announcement. It's a sandwich? Um, no. The, new, the science is in. <laughs> it's a sandwich. Um, the, the new New Day is no more, Sorg. I heard about no. that. No. It is the worst. has turned. No. Your su- your sudden but inevitable betrayal has occurred. Oh, was that you? I, I was talking with. Let it go like two more months. Was that you? I was talking with, or just like you? Just I know, I know this is great right now, and it's been really cool, and he's been a good guy for like two months. But it's just like you just expect them to turn like the next minute, right? Oh, and um, someone on Twitter put Kevin Owens was building up a spirit bomb worth of a heel turn. <laughs> Oh, fantastic. I really wanted them to just run that like past the point where you're like, okay, so they're not going to turn them. Yeah, they bring back yeah. Biggie, yeah. and there's four people, and then go a year and a half after that, so that you're, you believe that <laughs> all these guys are all married to each other. Yeah, and then <laughs> and then all of a sudden Kevin no, Owens no. turns. That'll be that'll be when Xavier turns on him. <laughs> you know, it'd be fantastic Aww. if they got John Cena to do that. If they put him in with the New Day, and they just 
And they kept on like trying to do no, that, no, trying no, to do no, that, no, and they're no, never no. going to turn. John. I'm waiting for John Cena to do the heel turn on Ellen. Mm. <laughs> well, he already did a heel turn on his on his hair. <laughs> Have you seen that? It looks terrifying. Like his his stylist has, has done a heel turn. Uh, he I looks will like say, a, though when he wears a baseball when he wears a backward baseball cap, looks like it's 2002 again. That's yeah. right. That's Didn't he just right. come out to Thugonomics? Yeah, he did at WrestleMania. Yeah. A little boom. Oh, I sang, yeah. I sang the whole song, mm-hmm. and I terrified my. That's just like when Batista came out here and pissed your ears. Like, oh shit, I know this whole song, don't I? <laughs> and so does everybody around me. Just keep mm-hmm. on like keep on doing that. Just like do a throwback month of just. Oh yeah, no, he's he's a professor of thugonomics, and then like have Triple H come out as uh, on her Helms. Everybody just devolves into <laughs> yeah. Have Undertaker come I'm back as the Lake of Reincarnation. Have Apollo Lake Crews come back. <laughs> as, <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry, Mad Mike, what were you saying? I said, the Lake of Reincarnation just needs to come back. Like we need a Lake of Reincarnation Raw mm-hmm. where everyone has their former gimmicks. I mean, the Hardy oh, Boys kind of did that. Yeah. Becky Lynch comes out for two belts and fiddle DDs all over the place. Mm. It'll be great. With steampunk goggles? Steampunk mm-hmm. goggles, right? No, no, even before that. Well, oh, the steampunk dress that. thing. Well, see, the Hardys were impressive because not only did they come back as the Hardys again, but that looks like he just stepped out of 1999. Yeah. Like, I was just, how did you do that, man? He just, he. I'm pretty sure he transferred his consciousness. Yeah. <laughs> Champions of time and space. You know, it'd be mm-hmm. fantastic seeing Alexa do that. Just seeing Alexa go back to her the NXT glitter, gimmick. Glitter, the sparkle, sparkle splash. Glitter. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Just just like a week ago, we usually have like the raw throwbacks. Can we just have like the NXT throwbacks where just everybody comes out as their initial gimmick? Oh, God, you I know. want Piggy to come out with the weightlifting powder. Elias is the drifter. Corey Graves is like emo Corey Graves. Yeah. Um, the you prototype. Know. The, the, like they put a temporary blonde streak in uh, Seth's hair. Batista um, uh, collecting for the poor. That, yeah, <laughs> no, that's, that wasn't exactly NXT, but but no, I get what you're going at there. Yeah, yeah. So like like, like the the ghost of of gimmicks past uh, comes yeah. back to haunt us all. American badass Undertaker. There you go. Triple still, H goes too far back that. and comes out as Terra Horizon. Oh <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. Oh, boy. Guys, hey, you know what else is a champion of my heart? That's our good friends at Slice on Broadway right here up the street in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA. If you're in town, there's a lot of opportunity. You don't have to just get get to this neighborhood. I understand. Pittsburgh can be confusing. It's very lumpy. But also, we got uh, locations out in Carnegie, PA, on the way out to the airport, the East End, and over at PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. And of course, I know many of you are not in the Pittsburgh area, and that's okay. But obviously, since we started and they had the one location, you've seen right there on the bottom of my screen, if you're on the video version, their global pittsburgh expansion and we want to help them with the global global expansion wherever you may be if you have a broadway avenue we want you to take a picture of your broadway avenue sign in whatever small town usa you may be in or big town usa whichever it doesn't matter but please tweet our friends. This is an unofficial campaign that we've been doing for them for a while now, um, and they haven't complained about it yet. Uh, hit up PGH underscore Slice on the Twitter. Show your picture of the Broadway Avenue in your town and tell them I would like a slice on my Broadway and let them know where they're definitely going to have customers wherever they go. Um, but please check them out. They've been supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, and we want to support them back. Thanks to our friends there that have been feeding the mayhem here for a good long time. Slice on And with that, we will be right back after this message and the big question. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. It is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. We're still rocking here. Mad Mike up in New York. Hi. Watching wrestling like it's his job. It is something like that. Something like that. Chance is with us. Getting that beer on. How are you doing? Helping me clear out the fridge. Yeah. 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 You don't want to leave too much stuff in there because then you're... Uh, fellow uh, workers, um, they just look like an alcoholic. It's just, it's just so funny. I feel so bad because we completely have like a, a, a 
recovery podcast that we do here. Oh, anyways, okay. <laughs> but then we also have a beer craft beer podcast too, so we're all over the map. Hey, man, it's it's as long as the same person doesn't guess. That's on both, true. That is well, true. Like it's awkward. Farnsworth with us. As well. what, what, what is that? You're welcome. Okay. Is that a chewy impression? No. no. Uh, bring it to an air bruh. 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 Oh, okay. It is time for the big question where we try to ask a question that will tickle your, your thought bones. Um, right. Uh, but uh, this big question, a little bit partially on our um, kind of uh, Ghost of, of Gimmicks pass. If there is a wrestler today that you think would be better served on returning to their previous gimmick, who would that be and what gimmick would that be? Of course, I, 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 you can't say basic, you can't say Doctor of Thugonomics. Thug that we just did, okay. but um, I and I'm sure we mentioned a couple other ones. But legitimately, who do you think would be better to reverting backwards, de-evolving, if you will, to an earlier version of themselves? We got one. I Barnes will Earth. start with. Uh, I think Finn Balor would be better as Prince Devitt. That's true. Okay. What's, what what is the difference between Finn and Prince Devitt? Prince Devitt wasn't encumbered by copyright issues. Mm-hmm. And therefore, it could do costumes that were clearly ripping off famous people. So instead of the demon mm-hmm. that Finn Balor is... He's basically Venom one time. He's right? Venom. Yeah. Uh, but he also did the Joker. He yeah. did... So... Mis- oh, I don't think that's necessarily a copyright thing, because Rey Mysterio... Yeah. But he... Does all that for WrestleMania. Uh, they don't let him do what... They don't let him do the cool things like he used to. Like, when he came out for Wrestle Kingdom... Mm-hmm. The uh, the Paul Bear one, mm-hmm. they would definitely not let him do that because mm-hmm. that's basically it was cooler than the Under- Undertaker's thing. Mm-hmm. The one where he came out of the casket. Yeah, when they came in with the Paul Bears yeah. casket down it was so good. Like that was the highlight of that. No, no, that was the one where Okada came out with the Velociraptor. Um. <laughs> that was a highlight of that. Again, we're <laughs> and you wonder why we're so excited about Wrestle Kingdom every that's, year, that's guys. Why- where they had the DeLorean, or was that later? No, that was Time Splitters. I think that was the, the year after. Yeah. Okay. Which, by the way, Kushida is wearing the vest in yeah. his NXT videos. But is they he do. wearing the large head? The large head? <laughs> oh, my God. Have you, seen it? Have you not seen the large head? I, I, oh, wait. Google that now. Kush- they have to take Kushida in big head t- mode. Big head mode, Kushida. They 3D printed a, Kush- a Kushida's head. They 3D printed it, then they had a little child come out with it, and it was fantastic. <laughs> oh, I think I remember. Oh my that. god! Like that was disturbing. It was, and uh, I'm trying to think who was Doc Brown. Yeah, who was Doc it Brown? It was last year. This is last year where they did Doc Brown and everything, right? No, it was. Uh, who was Doc Brown? Was it Alex Shelley? No, it was. Uh, it was a Japanese man. It was another wrestler. I'm trying to think who it was. Uh, oh, yes, I remember this. It was hold on. Here you guys you guys for video. I am sorry for your nightmares. Uh, it's so good. Like that's the best thing I that's the best thing I've seen. Like it was, was a little bit of like when this was happening on Wrestle Kingdom, it was a little like, what am I looking at right now? Also, you're watching at like four in the morning and this thing. Oh, comes absolutely. Out, so I love I love the hell out of it because like it is Kashida's entrance from New Japan. I'm sorry, uh, Wrestle Kingdom 13. If you want to look up the video, like who thought of that? Was it him? Because that's great. Different type. Anyway, if only somebody did that with like a a, a, a Raylan head for we might, our entrances out there. I think Jinx might be able to do it. There you go. So Jinx would be the mini Raylan. You know what? We could we could ask who wants or, to do what, or who would well, they could be the mini for each other. They could do both of them for each other. Yeah, yeah, like mascot heads. <laughs> Just switch it up. We're booking it. Damn it! <laughs> Just the entire yes. promotion and doing. What's up, Rise? What's up, IWC? It's so Anyways, good. it's so good. Um, did you answer? Or did we just offshoot? Oh, from me? That? Did you answer one? The no, one? Uh, but I'm going to. Um, <sighs> Bring it back around. Um, the tank with the Cadillac engine, hmm? Mr. Bray Wyatt. Oh, Dusty Hus- Harris. Yes, uh, Dusty Harris. Dusty Husky. Husky Dusty, Harris. Husky. Husky, 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 Husky Harris. Harris. Okay. That because he was because uh, we haven't seen anything like he like he was. 
Mm-hmm. Like he was a big guy that could move. Mm-hmm. He's still a big guy that can move. They just made him weird. Mm-hmm. And, <laughs> and even more weird. We'll get to that in a moment. Yeah. But you know, what, what if he's just like, this is basically the next iteration of Husky Harris that he's in like, now. if that's it, yeah. I would love it. Also, mm-hmm. I miss Bodell's. Yeah. There, I said it. I said, and if they bring it, if they bring him, they bring Bo into this new thing. Oh my God! I'm so I'm so in. I I said last night that if they're going full Pee Wee's Playhouse, he needs to be there. Needs to be Cowboy Curtis Axel mm-hmm. and Jumbo. Yeah, where he's literally just that face in a box, mm-hmm. wearing a black body stocking. Oh, it would be so <laughs> you know you you can have Bo Dallas in that in that whole vignette. Yeah. You just have to put him in a thing. Believe. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Thank you. Like, like he just walks around with the box closed, and every time you open it up, he just has that big cheesy ass grin. That's it. I love the fact that this is where comedy is going because mm-hmm. it's the same thing with like cartoons and everything else. And I'm all for it. Like, it's the weirdest thing I've ever seen. And if you ask somebody that, if you ask somebody from like ten years ago, like, oh yeah, no, we just saw Stone Stone Cold on Raw. Yeah, well, guess what? Now you get, oh god, what did I compare him to? The Robin Williams character from Death to Smoochie. <laughs> That's exactly who he was. Rainbow Randolph. He was Rainbow Randolph. Yeah. <laughs> Just like yeah, pretty much. Hmm. Like they're going for this weird "Don't hug me, I'm scared" thing, mm-hmm. and it's so good because that like that's extremely up my alley. It's extremely up my very specific alley. <laughs> <laughs> See, the promos are going to be great. It's oh, how absolutely. they enact. It's how they enact it. Oh, they're not going to have him on a show anytime soon. Like they're just going to have him do the promos, mm-hmm. and like he's not going to wrestle. Fine by me. Mm-hmm. If he does, uh, it's going to be in the sweater. Dave vest. Ponder, but Dave Ponder says Oscar is the evil clown. If they give, if they bring her back to if they bring her back to uh, the Tana days, yes, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because. The time of days where she could go with uh, Suzuki. Have you watched that match? Mm-mm. That match is terrifying because she takes full on slaps from Suzuki and she gives them right back. It's the greatest thing. It's like one of the better intergender matches that they that they did. Um, awesome. Amazing. Uh, okay. Mad Mike, how about you? I'm honestly trying to think of one. Like nothing is currently springing to mind of mm. someone who I'd like them to go back to their f- former gimmick. Um, what about the zoo enthusiast? <laughs> the zoo enthusiast? <laughs> the zoo enthusiast. Archer? Art. No. Art. no. What? No, it's Kevin, Kevin Owens. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Well, Archer was also a zoo enthusiast. No, but Kevin used to... Oh my god. That was the best thing about Kevin before he was signed was just like he used to go to zoos. He was really into zoos. It was his. T- it was what he called himself on Twitter for a yeah. long time. He yeah. also, I forget, he worked it into a promo in WWE. I forget what someone said. He's like, "You like that, huh?" I'm more of a zoo enthusiast. So. That's fantastic. <laughs> I don't need that. And hey, I I think my answer. Um, I would not mind seeing El Generico in WWE. Oh, I, that <laughs> looks so. That looks so sword, much like it was going to happen. That's a completely different guy. They'd have to sign someone new. That's not part of the question. I'll just leave it at that. Um, yeah. Uh, Tina Keys, um, Adam Rose, when he is Leo Kruger. Oh, oh yeah. man. Leo Kruger was so good. That was such a weird thing, and it was so it was on, so good. On a, just like, I'm pretty sure this guy's going to skin people. And we're talking about a promotion that used to have Skinner. Yeah. <laughs> I, would, you, I would also like to throw in there. I'd love to see the Ascension go back to being the Ascension, right? So, yeah. Like not like dudes in face paint, right? Well, just back like when being, nobody knew oh, what they were doing. Well, right I now. just want them to be fucking scary again, and because they were great in NXT. Oh yeah, the no, crowd, they were then, the crowd was chari- it was chanting for them. I mean, it was it was great. And then they brought them to Raw and just hung them up like raw meat. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> and I mean, it was also like as soon as you get to Raw, they're a lot smaller than some of the guys on Raw. Yeah. yeah, like, but yeah, the, but the size was half of their gimmick. You can get around that. I mean, I felt good so, lord, Taz had such a career. <laughs> I felt so bad for who was it? It wasn't. 
it was one of the members of Ascension that has been there since the beginning of NXT. I mean, uh, Connor. Uh, yeah, it was Connor. He's just been there since the beginning, and they didn't give him anything. But like the Ascension, oh yeah, no, the Ascension, they'll bring him up. And then all of a sudden, no, nothing, <laughs> no. You're here. Okay, I, I got one. I got one, Sorg. I want to see the return of Mr. USA guy. What? I want EC3 to go back to being Derek. Oh, Bader, God, Mr. yes. Mr. USA guy. Oh, man. Leaving like tips of change, bags of change. Yes. That promo was so good. Okay. Oh, I remember that. Listen, Just it was everything. It was, it was him with Wait. the Bella Twins and Daniel Bryan, where Daniel Bryan was the NXT superstar. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. and Maxine. Oh, my God. And then, like, he just... Who is now... Uh, Maxine, who is now uh, Katrina on, on Lucha Underground, by the way. Yes. Yeah. But, uh, so, here's... The entire skit, and I have it memorized, was <laughs> Derek Bateman... Fade in. Derek Bateman <laughs> bring one of the Bella Twins to the fake... To the fake, you know, the fake restaurant. Mm-hmm. And Daniel Bryan showing up, and the Bella Twins being all over Daniel Bryan. And Derek, oh, he acted so well in this. You, with his flags, with his flag Zubaz pants. Yep. And oh, and then like he brings out the plastic bag of change, mm-hmm. pisses off, throws it on the thing. This will pay for like one of your drinks. Walks out. It's fantastic. It's like the greatest really thing. Great. Jeez. <laughs> just, just if we're not gonna do anything with EC3, it, which yeah. it seems very clear that we're not. I mean, EC- have him be Derek Bateman again. Uh, EC3 is basically what. They wanted to be like a Ric Flair, Okada sort of thing, and it's it's not going to happen for him because he's a funny guy. Mm-hmm. Like he's just well, funny. It's not even that he's funny. He was funny in Impact, and it worked then too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they just don't want to invest in it. Mm-hmm. They want him to be a ready-made product. And I'm like, I'm sorry, you have to put a little bit of the of, yeah. little, of the work in, especially since you're calling him EC3, and the first question someone asks him is. What does EC stand for? And you can't fucking say it. Yeah, right, you can't right. say that he's like related to the owner of another thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Tina is uh, chiming in with the Ascension, uh, saying uh, in their FCW days it was pretty interesting too when they were managed by Shaw Guerrero. It was a different lineup for Ascension for a little bit too because I remember I've seen early, mm-hmm. like when NXT, like they were showed the, the first few the door moved and I didn't realize there was a person moving it. Uh, <laughs> Rooster Bissy said, fuck this, I'm out. Um, anyways, but um, no, they had a different lineup early for Ascension, mm-hmm. I believe. So, And, cause, and yeah. that was uh, Charlotte Flair's ex-husband. Bram. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, Bram was in the Ascension? Yeah, yeah. before yes. he became terrible. Uh, before he brammed? Well, b- before we realized he was terrible. Yeah. <laughs> before <laughs> Bram flaked. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Oh, well, uh, with that. And, you know, speaking of the Guerrero legacy, uh-huh. Aiden English should go back to being a vaude villain. Listen, yes, yes, please. Um, also, what are they doing with Stokely? This is completely uh, off topic. That we don't know yet? But I'm... Fi- I'm Oh, he, it's going to be a while before he debuts. Yeah, oh, I mean, but unless something very special happens there. I, I, like, God, all right. If I have my pick, what you could do with Stokely, just put him with the Street Profits. That's what <laughs> oh, I'm yeah. Geez, yeah. God, like, just, just, just do that. I usually don't like, like, just, hey, let's just put all the same race people together kind of tag oh, teams. But no, I'm not even saying that. Like, but but that she, fits. She probably could be two white guys. Yeah. yeah. Like, let's yeah. put Oscar and um, uh, Kyrie saying, "Thank you." I'm like boat girl. <laughs> Damn it! I'm not gonna. I was having trouble talking Listen, before the show. That tonight. was one of my original bullet race. points. <laughs> was was Kyrie saying and Oscar? No, it was Kerry Saint and how her elbow drop is better than anything you've ever it's seen. In, it is nuts. It it's is nuts. the second best elbow drop. Well, who's the first? I refuse yeah. to hear that it's better than Randy Savage's. Uh, you're right. Oh, I you're right. Right. Today, today, this it is generation. The, it, it, it is the best one in the past, currently being done. In the past 20 years. But currently, and this is another news thing, it's better than CM Punk's. Oh, all right, we'll get into that. Hey guys, let us know your um. Oh, real quick, partner says I want old school Chad Gable. Yes, now he's in singles. Maybe we'll get that right. Uh, over the top, corny, nerdy, who could destroy you. 
Um, like, uh, and also he's ready, willing, and, and gable. gable. Alex Carr says he's managing. Uh, oh, somebody. Oh, wait, what is this? Uh, I, I, I think uh, Cars is saying that um, Stokely is managing Shark Boy Jonah Rock. Nice. Is it, wait, is, is Shark Boy in NXT? I think he's. He might be. Wow. What? That's, That's weird. Tina Keys uh, just wants Velveteen and Stokely in a promo feud. <gasps> That would be kind of the wrestling stylings of Morris Day versus Prince. In, in. All also, right. yeah, and, speaking and of managers. The Street Profits would be the time. Speaking of managers, if we got Eli Maverick back to being who he was. Drake Maverick. Drake Maverick. If yeah. we got him back to being Rockstar. Spud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. put him with EC3. Yes. Exactly. Put him with EC3. His previous gimmick. Being beside EC3. If no, we're he had send one. Everyone back to TNA's gimmick. Let's do it seriously. No, the best thing is that Spud had one between those two where he had a head injury and he was stuck in the 90s. <laughs> that was no. That was fantastic. Jeez. Wait, what was that? That was like, that that was like when he was DNA. in progress. Yeah. Like, oh, okay. Okay. okay, I was yeah. gonna say, I'm like, that wasn't. Oh, dude, great. Mike, Mike, I don't think you know pre TNA stuff of Rockstar Spot, do you? No, because um, Dombrowski knew him from uh, the one PW days, and, and I guess around the Indies in general, because um, he was all he's always one one of the guys. I was like, and he said on this show, he's, he was always really proud of seeing what Rockstar was doing uh, when he was in Impact, right? Oh. So, um, yeah, no, there's a whole. Like you need, is there a best of rock star spot out there? Because I think you need well, to find some stuff. Yeah, because you can make an easy compilation because it's uh, on YouTube. I yeah, mean, didn't he do the? Uh, he did some competition. Mm-hmm. He was British. on. He was on MTV for something, or a reality show. Oh, oh you're thinking of uh, boot camp, first boot camp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was, like I don't think. Yeah, yeah that was when he got signed. Yeah, that's how he got signed. Out of that it was yeah, like yeah. it was like they're tough enough. Yeah, like they're British tough enough. Hey guys, well speaking of wrestling, we mentioned our good friends at Occupy Pro Wrestling earlier this evening, but I want to give a shout out to them. Oh, my merch is over there, C-3PO is wearing it. But I was wearing my smart cap when I was playing uh, the WrestleMania VCR board game with Keith Hot the other night here on, uh, on, on the live stream on Friday night. Uh, but did you know that April is National Autism Awareness Month and Occupy Pro Wrestling is looking to support a great cause? When you buy merchandise at wetamaneuver.net or shop.occupywrestling.com uh, in the month of April, 100% of the proceeds go to the Asperger Autism Network. Uh, check them out at aane.org for more information on that awesome organization and we'll hopefully see you in the shop. And again, I, I picked up some of the stuff when I hit up um, Alex. Alex, I just realized I owe you a PayPal. Sorry about that. We'll take care of that soon. Uh, but um, Occupy Pro Wrestling's got some really cool shirts and I believe he's working on some new stuff coming up here as well. Uh, his smart line, his uh, kind of Nickelodeon themed um, stuff over there as well. Uh, so go check it out. Again, OccupyProWrestling.com. You got a quick link and I'll look at some of the merch right there all right on the front page. We've been having fun with the Wrestling Is shirt. I believe last year was when uh, Missy was using Post-it Notes uh, <laughs> here on the show to show it off. So uh, Occupy Pro Wrestling has been supporting the Wrestling Mayhem show for a good long time and we're returning the favor. Make sure you do that. Great cause they're doing with their shop this month. Uh, get a Smarko's Modern uh, Wrestling Life uh, uh, shirt as well. Uh, Legends of the Lucha Temple as featured on Lucha Underground. Uh, and so much more. OccupyProWrestling.com So, speaking of... Wait, there was another thread I wanted to follow on this. Okay. But all I can think Bray of Wyatt. is Bray Wyatt. Uh, but I thought there was something else we got into I wanted to come back to. But yeah. I can't remember it. So here we are. Here today with Bray Wyatt. Um, being a Pee Wee Pee Wee's Funhouse character, so an interesting um, uh, bit of story that kind of went along with this. Uh, the, uh, a Dutters actually shared this with me earlier. Oh, I'm sorry, I actually found a. Sh- hey, there's that wrestling is shirt with the uh, all the uh, post-it notes from last week. Uh, so you can check that out over on our feed at Wrestling Mayhem Show. Um, so a little bit extended ad. Sorry about that. Um, but she shared an article about how uh, they actually shot those vignettes with Bray Wyatt here locally in Pittsburgh, of all places, um, with the uh, D- Douglas Education Center south of town. Uh, I believe these guys are connected with uh, uh, Tom Savini School, George Romero, um, um, filmmaking graduates uh, that worked on it. 
Um, so you can you can check out that article. We shared it in the Wrestling Mayhem Show group if you want to check that out. Um, their post talking about that uh, latest batch of vignettes. And I guess that includes all the creepy the creepy uh, uh, doll stuff and everything. I don't know. What are you guys thinking about this? Like generally, what are, what are you thinking about these uh, uh, Firefly Funhouse? It's a really curious evolution of the character. I mean, it's. I feel like it's kind of a thing where they wanted to turn him face for a little bit. Mm -hmm. And this is probably the only way they can really do it. Mm -hmm. I, I liked the, I liked the juxtaposition Mm -hmm. in that it was, here's a creepy doll. Here's a skull coming out of a cheap looking box. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, all of that, the payoff is Pee Wee's Playhouse. And I liked that turn and I enjoyed it. I don't see how they keep it moving. How does this turn into a wrestling storyline? Yeah. And I, here's the thing like, as much as I love it, mm-hmm. I love everything that's happening. Like, I love it because it's, again, the death of Smoochie thing. Don't hug me, I'm scared. Uh, Wonder shows and sort of vibe they have going. There's just not, I don't see it as there's being a lot of ways for it to convert. Like you're, Mm -hmm. you're going to get guys like me who love adult swim and love the PFFFR thing and like Mm -hmm. love all that sort of, but as far as it gets to wrestling, and this is a big thing with uh, WWE in general, who are you going to have for him to go? Mm-hmm. Like, how are we going to work that especially in? On, especially on Raw. And there could be a plan already. They do have that worked it, out. It, yeah, but like, it just... Because there's so it's something so weird. Mm-hmm. Like, so extremely weird that there's only, like, maybe five people on the roster that can vibe with it. We're so used to... You know, we talk about the Viking experience, yeah. uh, the Viking Raiders, whatever they are this week, and, and everything. It, 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 you know, we're, we talk about how so much gets dumbed down when we get the raw yeah and then we put together something like this that has so many layers to it it requires a lot of the audience that may or may not be there Mm -hmm. and i don't feel like i'm insulting anybody while saying that but no 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 it's a different kind of audience it's because it's like sticking a lucha peg in a wwe hole Mm -hmm. like like raw the the atmosphere on the television show raw Mm -hmm. it's you that that is an atmosphere that is set it is created it is a fully fleshed out universe right there's no easy access point for something like the like the matt hardy stuff like this bray wyatt stuff Mm -hmm. it's always been the problem with bray wyatt Mm-hmm. Yeah, like like it's it's really always been the problem with him, like and it's not anything on on the performer, it's they don't do the work to make the setup plausible. Now, if we were having like for weeks, you have the puppet like show up next to a little kid who's a plant in the crowd, and say. Hi, would you like to be my friend? And just leave it at that. And you build a... Like, it's world building. You can't just drop us right in. It's like... It's like if you've never seen a Marvel movie and your first one is Endgame. Yeah. Like, like, and you know nothing about Marvel. Mm -hmm. You know nothing about Marvel. You're going in that the first one you're seeing is Endgame. Right. You have to build the world. You have to have someone come at, like have a random nondescript person come out with the with the puppet with the woman doll like and say ha- like hi my name's Abby would you like to be my friend there has like, to be some sort of setup like the yeah. setup has to be there and with Raw no but with SmackDown probably like yeah. SmackDown would probably be a better place to do this but they decided to do it on well, Raw uh, and also and I'm curious if anybody's watched SmackDown because they ran these vignettes on both shows really. The, and I don't know about the last vignette we saw on Raw last night. It was on. It was on SmackDown. It was. It was on SmackDown. Okay. So we have not. We have we not don't locked know down where he's at. Where he's gonna be? Okay. But we know that he's a thing. But like, so it's just an easier. 
it's just a weird thing. And like Mike mentioned, they've been tr- like he has his own ideas, and he has good ideas. Mm-hmm. He's got great ideas. He's got great ideas. There's no way to sell them to. I you. wish. Oops. Well, here's the other thing too. I feel like this was written by the team that did Edge and Christian show. Yeah. You know the ones that did, uh, you know Bray Wyatt's um, maturity or what the hell was it? Um, midwife. Midwife care uh, segment on there. Or Samoa Joe Girl Scout cookies. Yeah, yeah. Like it, it feels like one of those, and it'd be interesting. But those can exist in a show on the network yeah. where you know, like not everybody loved Camp WWE. I loved it. Oh yeah. Right. But I love. I love like robot chicken and, and that kind of humor. So, and a lot of people were turned off by it. And it was like, yeah. So that's why they did it over here where it wasn't just in front of everybody on USA network. It's actually, it's the same thing with uh, those. God, what am I thinking of? Uh, the, the mini superstar ones, the ones for kids, the slam city, slam city. Oh, the, you were the second person to bring up slam, slam city, city to me this week or uh Saturday morning slam. Yeah. Yeah. Like there was just this weird little thing that, it was obviously somebody's brainchild, and they just like let it happen, and that's that's what Bray Wyatt is like. He's a solid and, in, in performer, and they just it's so frustrating. It's frustrating. You know the thing. You know the thing that almost kills it immediately. Almost kills it immediately. They run the vignette. We're all freaking out about it online. Like, oh my god, this is yeah. really cool. Why does he have a chainsaw? This is great. And you come back. Michael Cole almost laughs. Like. Immediately, almost kills the yeah, damn. Yeah, yeah. When they come back and just almost like, well, kills the damn thing when, on arrival. When, when you're when you when your your announced team like kind of comes back and automatically is like, what was that shit? You know. Yeah, Michael Cole doesn't know how to do anything. So well, Mike, kinda... no, Michael no, Cole no, 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 is no. instructed by someone else. Yeah, to right. react negatively. And, and I, uh, I feel, you know, again, stories and such, but I feel like Michael Cole. If he doesn't like, I don't think the gong Michael Cole from uh, the one season of NXT, the 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 uh, not the NXT we know, but the previous yeah the NXT the good rookie NXT. rookie well, show they're both good yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the, anyway, the, the female rookie the, the female, female rookie, rookie show where it went, really went off the rails and he was like like ringing oh, the yeah. gong yeah, most was, of them got signed mm, yeah. Most of them got signed. yeah 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 most of them got signed. I want to look at that roster again and see. Oh. Or I, I, no, I right. believe you, but I I'll just don't remember who was there. I'll find it, but uh, yeah, most of them got signed. Yeah, I love that like, stuff. Uh, like the whenever they do for whenever they go for comedy, I don't know why I'm just edging Christian's edging Christian stuff is kind of never my thing, but I can see oh, where it's going. I love coming. it. Yeah, Sorg, but Sorg, like season three, you when ready they, for this? Oh, uh, well, season. Uh, hold right. on, right. check this out. Right. Yeah. Caitlin. Hmm. Naomi, mm-hmm. AJ, Oksana, Maxine, Jamie Keys. The only one that didn't get signed, Jamie Keys. Jamie Keys. She was an announcer. Oh. She was the first one eliminated, but everyone else got signed. Oh, hey, everybody worked out from that, mostly. Um. Anyways, I'm, I'm sorry, you were saying, so, so, well, the Edge and Christian show... I love the humor, but I also will sit there and just listen to them riff on each other on a podcast too. Yeah, I, you know. Yeah, so, I, but that's but they're hitting again. They're hitting micro audiences at that point. Yeah, exactly. Listen, Edge and Christian season one is the stupidest fucking thing on that network. Hmm. Let's be honest, like it is. Um, <laughs> okay. Listen, I love the I love I just, Legends just, House, man. <laughs> I just, lately, lately, okay. it's the stupidest <laughs> thing produced on the network. Like, like just. Generally, but when they got into the stuff and they're they, they, and they ramped it up, and their whole point was to ramp up the stupid and crazy, like as they got through the season, yeah. like you know, and le- they just let them go, like that. That's great, you know. And and, and there were some really good moments, like Samoa Joe, um, Girl Scout okay. cookies. Uh, <laughs> so. Oh man, I just I really I really want. Them to be able to find something that Bray Wyatt can do. Yeah, yeah. like in, in a perfect biggest, world, that Bray Wyatt world. character would never enter a ring. Uh, Farnsworth, my the part that keeps sticking in my craw with the whole thing is in, with the vignettes, especially with Mercy the Vulture. Mm-hmm. The Vulture. first thing I thought I was, love you've learned all the names already. Yeah, 
I just learned that from looking at the video again. And they're saying that it's probably a, a reference to Waylon Mercy. Okay. Which is where a, a they think Bray Wyatt sort of got some yeah, of the Yeah, yeah. There's, there's elements in there, yes. for sure. Um, but Mercy reminded me of Rocco f- from the Road Warriors being in... Oh. In... The in, dummy. In, yeah. And that's where... The problem is there... It, it, with wrestling, there's a suspension of disbelief mm-hmm. that if you push it too far, especially when it comes to magic or dolls or all, all of that, you just absolutely lose all the disbelief. And then you're like, what the hell am I watching? Like that one time where professor, uh, uh, the professor turned into a T-Rex at uh, IWC. The professor turned into a T Rex. Yeah, don't you remember that you had a, it was in Clearfield. I don't think you were there. No, for that, I wasn't. But you had to have seen the clip. No, no, you haven't seen this. I don't think I. No, saw. because he comes out with the vials and he does stuff and, and tries to you know drink it or make the other person drink it or, or throw it at them. And he ended up drinking it. Said, "Oh God, it's inside me." Ran out the curtain and then a, a T Rex with a lab coat came out uh, and tried to attack Chess Flexor. But that that's. It's different because that's obviously comedy. Okay. What they're doing with Bray Wyatt is not obviously comedy. Okay. Like there is a dark undercurrent to it mm-hmm. that you believe is going to lead to some sort of plot or character underpinning mm-hmm. that gets belayed by the comedy. Yeah. But what they're doing with Bray Wyatt is no weirder than what they've ever done with the Undertaker, and like, yeah, I would say I would see. I was thinking about that too, and honestly, the best argument I have against that, and I'm not saying it's that good of an argument, is they gave the Undertaker uh, better special effects. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. the production value is better on the Undertaker's stuff. Like when they have lightning strike. It looks good. Okay, versus, how about Papa Shango? But Papa, and how well did Papa Shango get over? Uh, uh, pretty well. Uh, scared the shit the out day. of me. Scared the shit out of me as a 12-year-old, that's for sure. But here's the thing also, and I think... Papa Shango gonna... feud with the warrior. Like, mm-hmm. that's... Oh, I'm sorry, the ultimate experience. This is what's going to happen. Like, this is what we're hitting against, is the fact that there was budget for that stuff. There is not budget for everybody doing every something strange. The budget for the Papa Shango stuff was someone holding a squeeze bottle in their pocket and just black goo coming down their face. That was the budget. Mm-hmm. No, no, there was. I mean, no, it there was, was a was, rigging there. What? There was a rigging there. It's why he was wearing the coat. Had yeah. the rigging come up into the hair. It was the so only that time was... that we saw him wear a coat exactly. in an interview. But... Yeah. Oh, I thought he was just showing off that sweet merchandise. Well, I mean, it, hel- it helps. You know, yes. you, you get a little sales pitch in there. Are we yeah. talking dirt cheat stuff? Because do we know what the main thing is with the new Bray Wyatt stuff? No, mm-hmm. we don't. And frankly, don't. he's already hinting that it might already be over. Really? Really? He tweeted something yesterday or today that it was like, the problem is when you see a ghost, everyone concentrates on yeah. the ghost instead of what is there or some sort of comedy. Well, I mean, and then like on show, to the next thing, I think he said. They showed it tonight on SmackDown. So I don't because think there was, there's, a, there's talk that's supposed to be Nikki Cross coming up with him. I mean, it that that's what they should, should do. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Nikki Cross and Eric Young. Yeah. I mean, that'd be, that'd be good. Like having mm-hmm. Sanity come in and do this. Mm-hmm. Which would it wouldn't make it work, but it'd make it make more sense. Mm-hmm. He always did work good with the team, with the Wyatt family, and everything. I thought like it, I mean, there was you a just there was make a, it like a modern day oddities. Yeah, it'd be fun. And here's the thing: Eric Young can make anything work. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes. Well, <laughs> well uh, Eric Young anything made work. Weeks. He he made being scared of his own pyro work. Mm-hmm. Eric Young made a fishing show work. Eric Young didn't long. make it work. Well, yeah, and impressive, by the way, the yes. fact that he he got over with that. Uh, the pro- the problem with Eric Young is when you try to believe that he was the head of Team World Elite. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> then, oh, yeah. Oh. Can't, can't, well, can't you make us laugh again, Eric? 
Hey guys, we're a bunch of sports entertainment fans here walking, talking about wrestling week to week. What could be more entertaining? How about Dungeons and Dragons, guys? Better yet, how about a Dungeons and Dragons podcast on this very podcast network with Sorgatron Media? That's right, our friends at Bardic Mystery uh, Tour regale the crowd with tales of rock band, uh, a rock band, sorry, of bards on tour I told you words are hard tonight they kick indoors solve mysteries as in an, and as an added bonus they write original songs you can go check them out over at bardic mystery tour dot com it has helped me on my road trips coming back from uh, dayton ohio I'll, I'll probably listen to some of my trips up to michigan and rochester new york here in the coming months uh and uh some great storytelling happening there it's a fun time and uh, get you into that Dungeons and Dragons. If you don't, if you don't, if you're not like into Dungeons and Dragons, it's just good, like fun storytelling that their guys are doing there, uh, and a lot of voices, a lot of voices. Go check it out, BardicMysteryTour.com. A lot of fun over there here on the network, guys. It is time to find out what you learned in wrestling this week. Chat room two hit us up, and we got somebody that did email us to uh, Good Times. At wrestlingnamshow.com, uh, as well as what they learned this week. I'll pull that up here in a moment. But, guys, what did you learn in wrestling this week? What I learned is that apparently the chainsaw to Bray Wyatt was first done by Cliff Compton in a promo he did at the WWE, except he took the chainsaw to John Cena, and they rejected it, and then pretty much did it spot for spot for the Firefly Funhouse. Oh, so what man. I learned is... Always recycle, kids. <laughs> mm-hmm. What I learned t- today in this wrestling week is uh, brotherhood is magical. What I'm speaking of is gold dust ah! going to AEW. Yes! <laughs> yes! Brotherhood is magical. One last ride. It makes so much sense. It does. They mm-hmm. need to, they need something that has immediate appeal without being able to build it with a story. It's, it, it's brilliant book. It's Sorry. fantastic. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. And uh, for, I usually don't like the alt gold dust um, renditions. Like when he was in TNA, when yeah. he was in WCW, Black Rain, Black Rain was pretty, Seven. pretty god awful. Seven. Mm-hmm. As long um, as the guy wears cowboy boots, I guess I think he's happy. <laughs> he's in. There you go. There you go. But um, but no, I like at least like promo pick wise. I I've enjoyed the. I, I like this new iteration of whatever this. And I'm glad that like all the Rhodes kids are together and they're. Mm. Taking everything that they can away from WWE. Anyway, they're making a go at it, and I think that's yeah. going to be Cody's legacy if this, you know, works out for better or for worse, right? Yeah, exactly. Just like you know, uh, Impact Wrestling is the Jarrett's legacy, and it's not great. And it wasn't for the best, but actually, no, Jar- Jarrett's legacy would be uh, would it be GFW? Global <laughs> Force. <laughs> well, no, he started, but he started Impact Wrestling. So Impact Wrestling's legacy belongs on the shoulders of one person, Alundra Blaze. Yeah. What? I'll, I'll, we'll go into that on the Patreon side. Okay. Yeah. All right. We'll do that on the Patreon. After Dark here coming up here. Wow. Thank you for for plugging that in there, Mad Mike. What'd you learn this week? I I learned why I think I'm going to have a problem with AEW. <laughs> No, 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 it's, it's serious. I I was discussing this with uh with a colleague and you know, we we were trying to hash out the show cuz cuz I'm excited about Gold Dust uh Dustin versus Cody. That sounds like a great match. Um I learned that my problem with it is going to be how are the Bullet Club members going to categorize themselves on the show? Because if they're categorized as as they have been so far, as like vice presidents and everything like that, but also as in ring talent, that seems incredibly problematic and incredibly NWO to me. Yeah, that's always going to be weird. Like for some for people that have made a career of being the NWO of New Japan. Yeah. Like I don't know what they're going to like. I just I don't. I, a part of me doesn't want me wasn't want them to do that at all. But yeah. they've got I, enough of a good thing. I have a solution. Go ahead. Uh oh. Because because we were talking we were talking this out and I was trying to talk myself into a way that I could get a workaround for this so I can watch and enjoy the product. Um 
during during Double or Nothing, Jericho loses to Kenny Omega. Oh. And um, at the end of the show, you know, everyone's standing victorious, Cody and Dustin Hug and all stuff like that. Jericho's music hits again. And he comes out and announces that, well, um, he lost his match. He, he was very bitter. He had a meeting with um, uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars guy, and he bought him out. And Jericho is now the evil big bad in AEW. And, and basically fires Kenny Omega. And tells Kenny, "You should have taken that big, should have taken that big New York money, because while we're all in, you're all out." And then you have a singular focus. You have a singular focus as with someone who has the gravitas of Jericho, that can handle being the overwhelming heel authority figure and being a talent at the same time. Mm-hmm. And you don't have to worry about something like the Cody, like the Young Bucks giving themselves the tag titles, Cody giving himself a world title, Kenny Omega giving himself a world title. You know, like they're not the bookers anymore in story in storyline mode. You see, I also have a thing that could possibly fix AEW. It involves all those players except for one more. Kota Ibushi. That. And have them reform the Golden Lovers. Make Chris Jericho very uncomfortable. And yeah, that's about it. That's like the question, question mark, oh, profit. I, I, think, way, I think Kota re signed with New Japan, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Farnsworth pointing out, Farnsworth is dressed for that answer. I know. Right there with the Golden Lovers hat. The issue being, yeah, your, Kota Ibushi has stated <laughs> that he views himself. Being in New Japan until the end of his career. Yeah. Wow. Okay. All right. I, th- I think it may be something like, you know, the Bullet Club as we know it, it implodes. And that could be the story too. Yeah. To a point. I think they could just, well, so my whole, I have a whole mindset of AEW. Mm-hmm. Um, but they could do it hypothetically by just never having themselves in the title hunt. True. Keeping yourselves as just spot attraction stuff so that the young bucks take on whatever hot tag team they bring in or or kenny omega you know wrestles whoever they bring in as a as a big one name one-off you could do that and therefore it's never really conflicting with 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 their also management but the bucks are never going to let themselves be out of the title hunt just never I agree, and that that's uh, that's part of the issue. The fact that yeah. they came from, uh, like ROH was a machine created to that as it existed, it was to make them bigger and make yeah. them look great. And now they've removed themselves from that, and now they have to be the machine, which I don't think they are doing. equipped uh, yeah. to do yet. I think that I think Cody understands it probably better than anyone. I don't know that he's capable of doing it either. Because uh, the thing is, it's not just the mindset; it's the the entire company being like being built and being around it. It's mm-hmm. it's it's going to be some growing pains to get to the point where you are what ROH was to them, for yeah. lack of a better term. But then you have to be that for the people you are signing. But I'm mm-hmm. I'm glad that they're signing as many people as they are, and they're signing the diverse people, the diversity mm-hmm. that they are. Yeah. And like that's big. They're making a statement with their their signings in in positive ways, or at least yeah. attempting to. Um, and and that's that's cool. They're they're saying, hey, this is the kind of company we're going to be. And so how that shakes out? Yeah. Hopefully, it shakes out for the best. Yeah. Because... So and, and you can have concerns with you know what is the TV deal? What does the show look like? We really don't know. We know yeah, a exactly. show that they've done partially in conjunction with other promotions, Impact Ring of Honor last time. Exactly. That's all we have on the table. And on top of these li- live stream pool parties, uh, and that's it. And, and but 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 still, it's it's my pro. Uh, my issue is everyone's expecting so much because of who yeah. they are. Yes, but there, it's like it, it's like uh, me being on tool time, mm-hmm. and then expecting me to be able to build a mansion. 
And Tool Time think, was a show in the '90s for you kids. So I think the whole, they're also home like, I think they're also building up their own expectations. Yeah. They oh, are. they are. They're they're, not, they're building up. Their, so I mean, they're they're setting their own bar quite high. Yeah. And I I think it's gonna bite them in the ass. Like it's like it like no like not that it's not going to be a good show. Mm-hmm. It's probably gonna be a good show, but it's probably just gonna be a good show. You and know what I mean? Like, if, and if it's a good show that I would prefer to watch uh, uh, other than Raw, then it's that's a good enough show. So. Sorg, I can give you a lot of shows. That, are- <laughs> that is true. That is true. But I mean, some people will pick one, and a significant number will pick one that aren't crazy like us and trying to figure out if you should start watching 205 Live again. We got one emailed in. Ed Burke, Patreon supporter, sent one in to good times at, pro- at WrestlingMamShow.com. Uh, he told Mad Mike on Twitter last week that he had a historian thoughts. He had historian thoughts about the Viking experience slash Raiders that he wished that he could have said during last Tuesday's show. So fuck it. He's sending them now. Uh, this is what uh, you all learned from wrestling this week. The word Viking is not a noun. It is a verb, which that meant raiding or to raid. The Danish men that sacked England were called Vikingers. Wh- who, those who went a Viking. So everyone welcome the main rosters, the newest tag team, the Raiding Raiders. Mm-hmm. There you go. <laughs> that is wow. We 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 have Professor. It's like, Bo- it's like the Los Angeles Angels. Oh, the, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. The Angels, Angels. The Angels, Angels. Yes. The the Angels, Angels. The <laughs> the the Angels, Angels. The the the, the, the angels the, and Helen. Oh, the, the angels. Los Angeles Angels is the the angels. angels angels the the angels angels. Okay, did you ever, did, Kennedy. Did everybody follow that, Mister Kennedy? Kennedy, nice guy. Nice guy. Yeah, he was really cool when he was in Meadville a couple years ago. So, but nothing. No, all right. I, uh, what did I learn? Uh, what What did you learn? What did you, you learn? Learn? <laughs> What did I learn? Um, no, I, I did. Uh, I talked a little bit about WCW's Lodi on the wrap up yesterday, and a little bit on Twitter as well. Um, but uh, you, you guys can read that. That is, is a thing that I learned this week. Um, but uh, kind of um, aside from that, I, I learned that you know, I, I nothing sparks a a, a, a a locker room than adversity a little bit sometimes. Because there was a little bit of a uh, shakeup with things. A lot of new faces popped up at a promotion this week. And it was really cool to see um, a show like that kind of step up and, and have something pretty cool. That was probably maybe even better than the original plan, probably. Um, so uh, this is kind of my experience with RWA Spring uh, Fling. I almost said Spring Stampede. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> check that in. There was, a lot, again, a lot of new faces that um, made an impression on there um, that I can't remember any of their names. But because <laughs> I haven't done the edit for the bacon, but uh, go check that out. Um, a lot of cool things happening in indie wrestling. A lot happening in indie wrestling in general these days too. We're, we're doing like ten shows in May, and that's not even all the shows in Pittsburgh. So that's there's a lot of wrestling happening. That's really incredible. Mad Mike four eighty three on the tweeters. He'll do things. He'll talk wrestling. He's gonna be wearing his gauntlet to Avengers this week. Don't you? Dare spoil Endgame for anyone, or I will punch you in the dick, or whatever your le- whatever your parts are with this. Whatever your parts. I, I'm glad it's your all inclusive there. Um, I am. Do not spoil Endgame for anyone. Oh, you know who kills be Thanos? an ass at. Do not Snape kill Dumbledore. This shit. Oh no. Thanos is killed by Brienne of Tarth. I would honestly be okay with that. <laughs> Bring it all together. Uh, Farnsworth, he's on the Twitters, but his voice is on IWC. Uh, very true. Yes. What, what, will we see you approving ga- grounds? In approving gown? In approving ground. Uh, possibly. Gown, <laughs> I, mean, ground. I mean, I, I still got the gams. There so. you go. There you go. <laughs> and, of course, Chance, where can the people find the things that you're doing? You can find me on Instagram, Twitter. If you want to, you can even find me on PS4 at, at Chance underscore second. There you go. Check out everything. Of course, as I mentioned, we will have Indie uh, Mayhem show this Wednesday on the IndieWrestling.us 
Facebook page, we will have Hollywood Couture. That is uh, the the threesome, I believe. Of, of, I don't think they're bringing the. Uh, I don't know. Mambo might be coming too. I mean, that's not confirmed. Um, I'm pretty sure David Arquette is not coming. But well, Katie Arquette, Calvin Couture, and uh, Elijah Dean, all part of that, we will have here in studio Wednesday night. A lot of great stuff going on. Please keep an eye out on We'll see you guys next time. Mayhem out. All right. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. 